morning. And uh, Brother Mike, I see you back there. Miss Linda, get to come today as well. Or, or like a tea pray for Miss Linda. We're going to see Brother Mike back there. And um, I'm glad that they're uh, uh, getting past and getting help. And of course, what they need. But you do pray for them these next weeks ahead. And three parents who want home to be the Lord in just a very short period of time. So you'd be much in prayer. But I'm glad because of the day there is hope. Amen. Amen. God. It's not goodbye for the child of God. So see you later. Praise the Lord for that. Let's bow together and ask God to bless y'all for this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the opportunity that we have to be stewards of that which you've entrusted in our hands. Thank you, God, for allowing us to give for the cause of Christ. That, Lord, we may get the gospel around the world and here at home. Father, I thank you so much for what you've done already in the service with the choir and the singing. Already in the sunrise service this morning. Already, Father, in the jubilee. But, God, we're here today expecting something fresh from heaven. Lord, I pray you'll give us what we need today. Save that one sinner lost that needs God today. Touch that one today, Father God, that's cold. And, Lord, needs to get back in fellowship with you. God, encourage that one, God, that life's troubles and battles have them discouraged. I pray give us a good day in the Lord. We'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Gates and doors were barred and all the windows fastened down. Spent the night in sleeplessness and rose at every sound. Half in hopeless sorrow and half in fear the day. We find the soldiers breaking through to drag us all away. And just before the sunrise, I heard something at the wall. The gate began to rattle. And a voice began to call. I hurried to the window and looked down into the street, expecting swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. There was no one there but Mary, so I went down to let her in. John stood there beside me as she told us where she'd been. She said they had moved him in.
stand. Stand to your feet, please, if you would take your Bible. I had a fellow talking to me about going to Jerusalem, well, to the Middle East. And he said, Preacher, you want me to work it out where you can go? I said, no. He said, you don't want to go? I said, no. He said, why? I said, I don't like to fly. He said, you don't want to go see the tomb where Jesus is hidden there? I said, I don't have to fly with there. No, he's not there. I don't know. I'm glad people do that. I mean, I've, I've heard it's a wonderful experience. But I, I know it is. I know it's a lie. And uh, me flying over there is not going to have me any more convinced than the fact that he lives in my heart. And he changed my life. Amen. John chapter 14, if you would please. John chapter 14. Trust this morning you would uh, give me your undivided attention. I trust God will help us and speak to us today. John chapter 14, verse number 1. The Bible says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Now don't get mixed up about preparing in the mansions. Preparing a place simply meant he's going back to present the blood. You and I have a place. Uh, a place we can go positionally in Christ because we're saved. But yes, I do believe the mansions are there. Yes, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. And whether I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And my text verse is verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by Amen. me. Amen. Church membership won't get you to God. Amen. A denomination will not get you to God. Amen. Being baptized, sprinkled, dunked, drowned won't get you to God. Amen. Well, drowned will get you to God. <laughs> but I do want to say this today. There is only one way. That's right. And that way is Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's not of works, lest any man should right. right. It is simply trusting Jesus Amen. in Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm so excited about this title. The message is not near as good as my title. But I'm excited about the title today. I want to preach this morning on this thought. When the truth gets out. Amen. You'll get it in a minute. When the truth gets out. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And this morning we celebrate the fact that the truth got out. Amen. So you pray this morning God will help us. Be sensitive to everybody around you. Let's just enjoy what God's got for us. Thank God for His presence. Father, thank You for the Word of God. Thank You for times of study and preparation. But God, I know without Your unction, without Your help, it's just sounding brass. Tinkle and several, God, it means nothing. So Lord, I pray this morning, may You anoint me, God, to preach the Gospel. Lord, may we preach Christ. Lord, I pray today, God, that someone sitting here today that may know about You, they may have even heard about You, but they have never experienced You. Lord, I pray that today 
would be that day. In Christ's name we pray and all God's people say it. Amen. You can be seated. The truth is a very important thing. I was reading this morning a few little articles. I read across something that I really liked. And when I read across it, it said, these fellas went on a, a deer hunting, elk hunting uh, expedition or flew into an area by a plane. And when they got there, they hunted for several days. And after they hunted for several days, uh, then uh, they were to uh, be picked back up by the plane. So while they were there hunting, they had a really good time. And while they were there enjoying their good time, they killed two large elk. The plane landed back for them. The plane got there. The guy came to them and said, you guys ready to go? And they said, yes we are. And they said, we have two elk we want to take back. The pilot said, no, I told you that when we went back, uh, we couldn't care enough weight. Just take one of the elk back is all we can do. We can't take two back. And the hunter said, well, last year, same plane, size plane, uh, took two elk back. And the guy said, same size plane? He said, yes. He said, well, I guess if it worked last year, y'all load them up. He said, we'll do our best. So they put the two elk on the plane and they got in the plane and the plane goes down the runway and the wheels are trying to lift off the ground. Finally he gets up a little bit in the air and it goes a ways and all of a sudden just runs right into a group of trees and crashes. Everybody's alive. One fella looked over to the other fella and he said, well how far did we get? The other fella said, a little bit farther last year. <laughs> That's not the truth. <laughs> I'm afraid in our day we've had a lot of things that are not the truth. And I think it's important that we preach the truth. Amen. Jesus is referred to by many titles in the Word of God. The Lamb of God, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Bright in the Morning Star. He's our rock. Uh, he's our water. He's our bread. There are so many things that we refer to Jesus Christ as in the Bible. But one of the things that He's referred to as is truth. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way. But He also said, I am the truth. There was one that asked in the Word of God, Pilate, what is truth? And Jesus is the truth. Amen. Matter of fact, we celebrate the fact that the truth was placed in a tomb. But thank God this morning we can say that the truth has got out. Amen. Amen. Thank God the truth Amen. has got out. This morning. Today's help, I want to Amen. preach on the subject what happens when the truth gets out. Amen. You know what? That phrase I've heard for years. Well, the truth's going to come out. <laughs> Don't worry, it won't be long. The truth will get out. Well, I'm glad to say this morning I'm celebrating the fact that it did. Amen. Amen. And I just want to spread the rumor. Amen. I want to let everybody know that the truth got out. I want everybody to know that Christ is alive and well and lives within my heart. Thank God for truth. There's a lot of things in our day that are lies. A lot of things in our day. People lie to you. There'll be people of intellect that will lie to you. There'll be books that will lie to you. But I'm glad this morning that we have the truth. That we can share the truth with people. Listen, you say, preacher, how do you know that it's real? I know it's real because He lives in my heart. Friend, I'm going to tell you this. I know Christ changed my life. I know I am not the same. I know that the truth got out. Amen. And I'm glad I'm going to say this, that one day, an old-fashioned preacher stood up in front of me and told me the truth. Didn't tell me how good I was. Didn't tell me all I had to do was join a church. Didn't tell me all I had to do was be baptized or spread.
sprinkled or, or signed some card. But I'm glad somebody stood before me one day and said, I just want to tell you the truth. And the truth is you're a sinner and you need a Savior. And I'm glad that Jesus changed my life. Amen. That, my friend, Amen. is true. Amen. Amen. This is not a theory. This is true. Amen. Mr. Darwin had a theory. Yeah. This is true. Amen. This is true. Amen. Now I want to say today that there are some truths that freedom brings us. Or freedom that truth brings us. I can't recall how many times I've heard one say about, man, I'm so glad that the truth come out. I feel so much better. What a sigh of relief that the truth comes out. Well, there is a freedom that truth brings. Yeah. The Bible says that you shall know the truth. Yeah. And the truth shall make you free. Right. right. Let me give you truth. Little boy, I run through the house. My mom said I just cook biscuits. Don't touch the oven door. Well, for a little boy, you might as well be saying, go lay it on the oven door. Because I'm getting to think, why she robbed me of getting to touch that oven door? And so I go by that oven door, and I put my hand on it, and it burns me, and I go screaming to my mom, and my mom says to me, I told you the truth. It was going to burn you if you touched it. I experienced freedom after that. <laughs> Next time she cooked this, I didn't touch the door. Amen. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Matter of fact, and I want to say this before I give a father the message this morning. I want to say this. When you think about truth, you think about the truth as we are uh, talking about this morning. Uh, that truth is the freedom for you and I. And I want you to see how that is. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is 1 Corinthians 15, 55. You don't have to turn there. But the Bible says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Amen. What a great verse. Yeah, man. When you think about that verse in the Word of God, and you think about what it means this morning, and you think about the fact uh, that God has delivered us, what does that verse mean when it says, On death, where is thy strength? On grave, where is thy victory? How many of you have ever about killed yourself if a bee happened to get in your car or flying around you and you probably going to have more damage and injury from trying to get away from the bee uh, than you do the bee stinging you? Uh, one bee that makes me really nervous is a bumblebee. <laughs> you know, when you can hear a bee coming and you think it might be, it might be an F-15, you know, you know, but it's a big bee. Amen. Bumblebees just think, man, amazing how something can be so wonderful, can be so painful. Yeah. If I were to watch you today and you get in your car and we put a bumblebee in your car, you'd have to go some out. Right? Oh! Man, somebody put a bumblebee in your car, but you'd do everything you could to get it out. Unless you knew that it couldn't sting. See, if you put a bumblebee in my car, and I know somebody that got rid of the stinger, and all he could do was buzz, but he couldn't sting me. I get him to sit on my shoulder. I get him to sit on my head. I say, "Come on and ride with me," because you can't do nothing but buzz. Amen. Lord, well, I'm glad uh, when Jesus got up on Easter Sunday morning. You know what He did? He took the sting out of death. Amen. 
Bible says, Oh, death, where he is, thy sting. So I can go to some Christian's funeral and people waving their hands and crying and shouting and praising God. People say, Well, that's disrespectful. Oh, no. Amen. Oh, death, where he is, thy sting. Amen. So we are free from the sting. Yeah. Right. This ain't my outline, but I like you. So we're also free from the sepulchre. Yeah. Yeah. He says, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Then he says, Oh, grave, where he is thy victory. Amen. As a pastor now going on 30 years of my life, I think about how many families I've watched leave a graveside. That's the hardest part. Because all we've ever known of that person is the body of the shell that's in that casket. Uh, we can't see the Spirit. God knows the Spirit. When we walk away from that thing, boy, I remember as a young boy, I'll never forget, I wasn't right with God. I had a family member, a dear grandpa died, I loved, was close to, and I went right with God, I was saved. And, and I remember going to that funeral, they got to sing precious memories, and, and to this day, I don't like that song. I don't know what it is about it, but I, I just, I don't want to hear it. I, and it's not a bad song, it's a good song, it's just for me, it kind of carries me back to a place, and I wasn't saved then, you know, and, and I remember that, and I remember walking away from that grave, and man, that grave just, it had such a hold on me yeah. when I walked away from the finality of that grave. Yes, sir. But then God saved me and called me to preach, and one day I preached my daddy's funeral. And it was, it was different. Amen. Because see, when I got done with my daddy's funeral, I walked by that casket and attacked him. And I said, see you later. Amen. You say, preacher, what's the difference? The difference was, there was a day that I did not know the truth. There was a day that I did not accept the truth. But hallelujah, that day, when I walked away that day, I knew what the truth was all about. And I know it today. And there is no steam. And there is no power of a sepulcher, a grave, when God's in some Amen. When the truth gets out. You ever heard somebody say, Boy, I'll tell you what, the truth comes out. Boy, I'm telling you. Uh, yeah. Well, it got out. Amen. And the world's bothered by it. Yeah. Right. Amen. I, I watch MMA sometimes. I enjoy that. I don't know why. I just like watching people beat other people up. I enjoy them guys are really good what they do. But I noticed I had a little boy on there last night. I was watching it last night. And, uh, he calls himself something, soldier of God, his last name, you know. I'm glad God wouldn't hit me that hard, but that's Amen. what he's called. But anyway, I noticed he had a shirt on, had something about Jesus and different things. And I noticed they interviewed everybody last night but him. And I know why. Because he was going to be one of them athletes that says, I want to thank Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And I knew he was going to do it. I did a little research about it. And no doubt he would have said that. And the news media knew he would have said that. And the MMA knew he would have said that. Can I tell you this? They don't want the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. But friend, can I say this today? While my heart is born to that. So what's the big deal about Jesus being called the truth? Real quickly. The truth has power to liberate. Amen. Amen. What do I mean by that? The truth has power to set you free. Amen. You know what the Bible says? Whom the Son sets free is what? Free. Amen. 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 The truth can set you free. Amen. Amen. I will not criticize Alcoholics Anonymous or drug rehabs. I know that people need facilities and people need help with addictions. I'm a pastor, trust me. I know what addictions do to people. But you know what? I have seen so many people delivered in their life when they accepted the truth and the truth set them free. Amen. 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 So man, back in the back, 
that's running the video system and the internet system of our church right now waving his hand when I said that. Because he was an alcoholic. He was a drug addict. He was everything. Uh, his family was in shambles and ruins. This gentleman on the front row couldn't even have his own boys. He's going to have us take an Easter picture of him today where his boys are standing by his side. And he could not have that. And the reason he could not have that before is because he didn't know the truth. But when you know the truth, it will set you free. Amen. Truth will liberate you. You walk in here today and you say, well, preacher, I need some help. Preacher, I've got some things in my life I just can't seem to get victory over. You want me to tell you the truth? The truth is, I can do all things through Christ which is strength of me. The truth is, is there's nothing too hard for God. Friend, I would not be standing here today. I would not be doing what I'm doing today. I would not be a child of God if not somebody had told me the truth of what Jesus had one day, hallelujah, it liberated me, it set me free, and I am free indeed. I'm not serving God today because I have to. I didn't have to get up early. I didn't have to go to sunrise. I didn't have to come in here. I'm doing it, hallelujah, because of what He did for me. Amen. Power to liberate. Yes, sir. But not only that, watch this. The truth has the power to separate. Because see, once you know the truth, it'll separate you yes, from stuff. Yes, Did you know that nobody ever preached to me to stop listening to ACDC after I got saved? I used to ride down the road and sing, I'm on a highway to hell. After I got saved, I put that on one day. You know what I thought? No, I'm not. Hey. That's right. <laughs> Before I, Lord, I'm going to have to take time out and do my own shout. Hey. 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 pictures last week. Help me, all right? Hey, can I say this? Before I ever got saved, I didn't think about that. Yeah. I didn't walk down the road and think about I'm going back going to hell. But what after I got saved oh. and somebody hey. told me the truth, hey. it liberated hey. me, it set me free. That's right. I mean, when John got saved, John was listening to that freak, Marilyn Manson. He know the freak. Church of Satan's even put an endorsement on him. Right. He's a freak, but he grew up in the Baptist Sunday School, the Baptist Church. Parents, you better get him on the right stuff. John came in here. He got saved, but I know this, I know how that stuff tugs at you. But see, you can't know the truth and don't separate. Hey, amen. All of a sudden you think one day, I can't listen to that. Yeah. That's not a part of my life. Right. See, right. can I tell you something? If you're on the Lord's side, you want to be on the Lord's side. If you're on the Lord's side, hey, the truth separates. Amen. amen. I'm glad the truth separates us from sin. Amen. amen. People say, well, you Christian folk, y'all just don't do that. Y'all think you're better than everybody. No, 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 no. You're no. not better than everybody. You're not better than probably somebody. And I'll say something to you. I don't do some of the things that I do because I've been separated from them. The truth. When you know the truth, don't touch the stove. I learned the truth. Amen. Hey, and God said, don't touch sin. It'll mess your life up. And I learned the truth. God said, right. trust me. And I'll set you free. Amen. Hallelujah. I learned the truth. Amen. I'm glad the truth set me free. Amen. It has power to liberate, but it also has power to separate. Amen. It separates me from sin. Thank God one day it's going to separate me from Satan. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Oh, happy day. Amen. And I'll say this. I'll tell you, I'll be the weirdest people. When I'm preaching meetings on the road. I've had some weird things happen to me. People come up to me on the road. I think sometimes strange people follow me. <laughs> I was in a meeting. I got the big way preaching, you know, as my pastor says, a big way preaching, whatever that means. 
I just kind of got good and loose in that church. And next thing you know, what I was talking about one day the devil's going to hell. We're going, he'll be cast into hell and burn forever. And hallelujah. And I jumped up and said, Lord, I've got I'm so excited. I think I'll just spit on him when he goes. Amen. But you always got somebody spiritual in every service. Amen. I had a lady come up to me. Okay. Pastor, and I thought, here we go. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I enjoyed that sermon. Uh, I spent it though, Christian. I enjoyed that book. She said, I kind of take offense to the fact that you were being so detrimental that you would spit on the death. Ma'am, do you read your Bible? Do you know he was not human? But an angelic being that yeah, failed. Yeah, that's right. It's about as bad as a woman asked me to pray for somebody who was sick on the soap opera. <laughs> not real life. Not real life. Pray for Luke. He's not feeling well. <laughs> Jim Little Hospital. You think I know, did you? Yeah, I've had a piece of bandits before watching this. Amen. Hey, let's say this to you. I looked at that lady. I'll be honest with you, man. You lost your mind. I'm not going to be no friend of the devil. separates us from suffering. Amen. Now I'll just have my own self right here. But I am so thankful one day. I don't have to have my phone ring in the middle of the night. I don't have to go by the bedside of someone to the hospital emergency room or, or I don't have to be done by that family of a precious loved one that's dying of cancer or I don't have to see another wheelchair rolled up front of this church or, or somebody on crutches. Hey, I'm glad, thank God, the cause of the truth. I'm glad one day there'll be no more suffering. Amen. 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 Let me say finally, I want you to love when a preacher says that. <laughs> There's power to liberate. There's power to separate. But freedom and truth also has power to invigorate. Amen. Amen. Just something excites me about truth. Amen. I mean, the first time I got a math problem right. Wow, glory. You get a test back. You got a set me on it and you're proud. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the truth that invigorates me is like a state trooper stopping me on Interstate 40 for running 80 in a, in a 55. That didn't happen, but I'm sure it did. And he stopped me. And then he looks at me. I'm about to have myself a spade. He looks at me and he says, the truth is, you will speak. Yeah. Amen. But then he would say, but well, I'm having a good day, and the truth is, I'm not going to give you a ticket. Amen. You know what that do? That invigorate me. Amen. Amen. That caused me to get happy. But guess what, friend? One day I still take Worship comes from experiencing truth. Yeah. Right. People think we're crazy. You know, we're supposed to come here and say, Oh, God, I love God, I love God. <laughs> Everybody repeat after me. Please don't smile, you're in church. <laughs> This is a religious ceremony. Right. 
One day when some folk get to heaven, they didn't know you could enjoy it. Yeah. 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 I'm going to hide over in the corner. When I hide over in the corner, I know Sister Sonny, but I'm just me, so deal with it. I'm going to hide over in the corner. I can see somebody come in say, oh, there's mama. Oh. I haven't seen mama in a long time. Hi, mom. <laughs> Some parent lost a child. All of a sudden, they get the glory. They look across there, and there's that child. I'm supposed to be known as you know. This won't love nobody more than anybody else. She was going down, I can see him go, oh, there's old Ben. Hey, son. Can you see him? Don't tell me how to go to court. I'm going to be over there behind that <laughs> All of a sudden, one of y'all will come in and see Jesus. Hey, yeah. Lamb of God. Yeah. I'm going some help. Yeah. I'm going some help. Yeah. Rose of Sherry. Hey, yeah. Lily back. Hey, yeah. Right yeah. one stop. Hey, yeah. He's a bread. Yeah. He's a water. Yeah. He's my joy. Yeah. He's my strength.
down the bathroom. I push that stuff up. Put me some masking tape on. <laughs> I must have put 30 pieces of masking tape. Look at Scotty said. Amen. 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 Amen.